So we're out here on Gariba Island. This is about 65 hectares of land that we've acquired with grant funding from the state government and council's environmental levy. So this site here was actually the site for a recreational fishing trust funded grant. So what we've been doing is using koya logs. You can see the remains of the structure here. So we had these koya coconut logs, about three metres long. So we stacked those basically three metres high within these wooden stakes that you can see behind us. And that, what that was designed to do was actually to stop that wave impact from boat wash that is eroding the banks that is visible here. So this section of the river has been subject to erosion rates of up to one metre per year historically. Uh, that, that leads to increased sedimentation and nutrient input into the river. So the coil log wall basically breaks down that wave barrier, provides a, a nice calm place behind that wall for the recruitment of mangroves, which is really important for um, habitat for fish and uh, small crustaceans. What we found after two years of um, high impact summers, we get a lot of ski activity in this area of the river that the coil log wall basically hadn't survived. It's taken an absolute battering. So you can see there's not much left. It's basically washed away, broken up. So LLS contacted me uh, to have a look at using some, some of the oysters we collect from, our oyster growers collect from Wallace Lake. So I was approached to get involved with our local land services. And as you can see behind us, we've started using some of this live and dead shell that we've, the oyster growers have come up and, and placed on this bank for us. So we're hoping that that is going to help to stop some of that erosion and that boat wash, but also we're hoping we may get a catch of live oyster on here that will bind that, that sediment together and um, form like a reef, oyster reef structure, in turn helping to filter some of that sediment and nutrient that comes off, off the land um, from the wash and general rainfall. So we know that oyster reefs have disappeared from lots of estuaries in Australia and some estimates we've lost you know, 95, 99% of the oyster reefs that used to be here before you Europeans got here. And so that's been a real driver for us to try and reinstate some of these um, oyster reefs back into estuaries like Wallace Lake. So when, you know, this opportunity came up where council was having a few difficulties with the coir logs disintegrating and they're worried about the riverbank continuing to erode and the mangroves getting washed out, we thought, well, it's a good opportunity to trial um, the use of oysters within this kind of a site. Uh, I've been farming here for over 50 years. Uh, my grandfather and my father and his brother started. As part of the byproduct of culling stick oysters and some of the single seed oysters we have, um, we get dead shell and we store it up in these bulk bins here. They're about a cubic metre-ish, so a tonne, tonne and a half. And then we load up the punt and we bring it up here, up the river. It's a waste product, so it's really great to be able to reuse that resource for an environmental benefit. We've also collected some live oysters, which we've added to the mix, but most of it's been of that waste shell from the production system. It's just a really good use of that resource. So we've brought a fair few punt loads up here. Yeah, we might have brought about you know, 100 cubic metres up here so far, maybe a little bit more. So my role is to um, get overboard and empty the baskets into the foreshore without damaging any of the mangroves and etc. I reckon it's going to work. I didn't think um, the banks were that eroded until I actually got overboard and seen how bad they were. But um, yeah, just by going up the last couple of times, I've noticed the growth of the oysters. So in this part of the site, we've um, placed some live oysters. This oyster's been, been growing here, so it's been up here for a couple of months. And we've got a few little snails in here are growing in that. So it's quite a good habitat for all those other little creatures. And we've got some mussels growing here as well. We'll see what happens over Christmas time when the boats actually start driving past and that may need to be a continual thing that needs to be done if that's, that's the aim and until something's actually established there with the mangroves and um, some live oysters actually embed themselves onto the, the bank, creating a habitat which will attract oysters and will attract other marine life and creating an ecosystem there for uh, a bit of biodiversity. Another function of the oysters is to filter lots of water as they're feeding so they can improve the water quality if we get them sort of established in large enough populations. A whole range of outcomes 
biodiversity, fisheries, water quality improvement at this site and stabilising the, the riverbank. And it's a bit more of a natural foreshore. We've tried other techniques which work pretty well with rock, but it's good to use a natural material that's grown, been grown in the system, just putting it back and for an environmental purpose, working really well with the, the oyster industry. They've been great. It's really exciting to be part of a restoration project up here in Wallace Lake. So yeah, this is the first project of this kind of type that we've done in the area. So it's been really exciting to do some innovation and try some different techniques. And so we haven't done it the same way all the way along the site. We've, we've done it a few slightly different ways so we can check out what works best. And yeah, hopefully over the summer months, we'll see whether we get any of the oyster larvae, the spat catching on the oysters and we'll monitor that and we'll see um, you know, if it really does start to knit together and become a, a proper oyster reef. And we'll also be working with the University of Newcastle to monitor fish and crabs and see whether you know, we get more of those animals around the site and whether you know, it becomes a, a good fishing spot. Yeah, we hope it provides a really good alternative to things like rock fillets Rock fillets are a pretty standard technique for stabilising riverbanks, but we think that oysters might be a good alternative in some situations. Like a gareba, where you're working on an island, there's other situations where it, you might have to use a barge. It gets pretty expensive and the rock itself is expensive. And, you know, these oysters have come from the system. They're, they're pretty natural. Yeah, we hope that, you know, we can demonstrate this as an alternative and we're hoping it's going to be effective and we'll monitor that for the next year or two and see how it performs, especially over the next summer when we have a lot of nor'easters and we have a lot of boat traffic along here. But we've, we've seen a few boats going past and it really looks like the, the wave energy dissipates through the oysters, so we think it's a pretty good material for, for coping with that wave energy. And I guess time will tell to see how it performs. It's been really good to see the, the fishermen and the oyster farmers working together on this project between council and local land services, local indigenous organisations like TIDE. Yeah, really great project to have everyone working together. So we're hoping we'll be able to do this kind of work at some more sites and, and this technique will be um, successful in other places as well. <laughs>